Hundreds of miles the Canadian Rockies stretch in wintry grandeur. A skier's paradise where 700 inches of snow fall yearly. But to the transcontinental highway builders, this beauty is a formidable barrier. For this is the home of the avalanche, one of nature's mightiest forces. As engineers watch, the colossal torrent of snow gathers speed and size. These avalanches must be foreseen and studied in all their characteristics before roads may be routed through the high passes. Here in the trigger zone caused by prevailing winds, they are especially prevalent and dangerous. Awe-inspiring in their destruction, they represent one of the greatest challenges to those who would span a continent. Allentown's fairgrounds receive an unearthly visitation with thousands of cheering kids on hand alerted in advance to expect not Martians, not Russians, but Santa traveling by Sputnik, accompanied by Mutnik. Santa keeps on top of the news as he begins his pre-Christmas tour of the country with first stop as always at Allentown, thanks to the efforts of Max Hess. Sputnik, space helmets and Santa. Oh, there's a jolly Christmas ahead for us all. For Little Gonzaga University, Bing Crosby's alma mater, this is the day when dreams come true and a shining addition is made to the campus. Derbingle greets Jean-Claude Lefebvre, seven foot three French basketball player at the university. For the occasion, he is joined by his sons and pretty wife. The faculty solemnizes the occasion as they proceed to the site of the old Groner's gift of the university. Gonzaga's most famous alumnus unveils the plaque marking the $750,000 library, which he has financed over the years. Derbingle records a new note for the books. Reunion in America. Mrs. Sang Kung Ko of Korea arrives after a three-year struggle by her son to have her admitted. Mrs. Ko is the mother of the North Korean pilot who flew a Russian MiG to the Allies thereby earning the $100,000 reward offered. Her son, now a student in an American college, has Americanized his name to Kenneth Rowe. Happy aftermath to the Korean War for a man who chose freedom. Remember the old woman who lived in a shoe and had so many children she didn't know what to do? Well, Mr. and Mrs. Paul Emile Tremblay of Quebec are in about the same predicament. They've had 17 children in 10 years, seven sets of twins amongst them. That's enough to make a mother go trembly all over. But Mama Rosa knows what to do. As special guests at a big hotel, they have breakfast in bed and a waiter to do the work. At West Point, the cadets have plenty to cheer about. And four, their commander-in-chief back for a class reunion is on hand. And the Army football team has things well in hand against Colgate. Barta carries for a 20-yard gain. With Dave Borland directing the attack, aided by Pete Dawkins and other hard-charging backs, the Army grid machine rolls to a lopsided victory. Borland to Dawkins again, who finds an opening and slants through for the TD. From the pitch out, Gil Rosler passes. Dawkins completes. Ike and Mamie are seeing top-notch football. Pete Dawkins rolls out to his left. Another touchdown. What a day for Cadet or Commander-in-Chief. Dawkins passes. Anderson receives. An old grad likes it fine. Anderson scores, and Army romps 53-7. Ramblin' Rex from Georgia Tech. Homecoming day in Atlanta is enlivened by the perennial parade of battered buggies resurrected from junkyards and coaxed into life for a day. Next on the agenda, football. Georgia Tech versus Duke. Duke is favored, but this is homecoming day and the engineers are up, as they say. Stan Flowers hits a roadblock, but it's only temporary. The Yellow Jackets take to the air. Brazelton to Smith. Benson dives over for the first touchdown of the game. A 
third quarter pass accounts for the second touchdown. Also, Georgia Tech. Brazelton connects with Simmerville, and the unbeaten Blue Devils of Duke receive their first setback. Final score, Georgia Tech 13, Duke 0. At South Bend, a Navy GOAT in the first quarter becomes a Navy hero in quarters 2, 3, and 4. Ray Wellborn's fumble ends up on the arms of Dick Lynch of Notre Dame, and the Middies are quickly trailing by a touchdown. But 59,000 fans see Navy dominate the rest of the game, with Wellborn, Navy's junior fullback from Texas, shedding his goat's horns in a hurry. His first burst of heroics is a 79-yard scoring romp in the second period, and Notre Dame is headed for the ranks of the beaten. In the second half, further Navy shelling shatters Irish hopes for a miracle. The future admirals are clicking. Wellborn's third touchdown comes via the air. On a pass from Forrestal, he races 32 yards to complete the scoring, and Navy wins 20 to 6.